Martin Maloney, a lecturer at Dublin City University's School of Communications. I've recently done some work on the use of social media in Irish politics. Social media has changed a great deal of what we've done in communications in general and it's changed the way ordinary people interact with their lives. Ever since Barack Obama was first elected as president in 2008, social media had suggested itself as a revolutionary medium of one kind or another. It was a bit of a slow burn in Irish political life. It was seen perhaps as something that was useful in large constituencies where the voters didn't necessarily ever know the candidate. Ireland's a small country, our constituencies are even smaller. So it wasn't really taken seriously until perhaps the 2011 general election, when it really came into its own. In that election, almost 80% of the candidates had Facebook accounts and almost 60% of the candidates had a presence on Twitter. The expectations of Irish politicians as to what social media can do vary greatly. Certainly for those that uh, adopted the medium, their expectations were probably unrealistic. But more importantly, their use of social media was mistaken, certainly initially. They saw social media as another form of broadcast, the same way as they would treat print advertisements or perhaps a television interview. But the secret of effective social media is about engagement. And this is why it had worked so well for Barack Obama in 2008. Barack Obama was a community organiser. What he did with his use of social media was to move his interaction with people in the real world or the traditional world into a digital space. He gave them things to do. He allowed them to voice their opinions and their concerns and their views. He allowed them to feel that they were having an influence on the shape of his campaign and that they were being heard. That is the secret of effective social media. In Ireland it took us a little longer to grasp that concept. Fine Gael used social media to great effect during that 2011 ele general election campaign. They dispensed with their standard party website and instead party leader Enda Kenny invited constituents to voice their views on a specially created website. This appeared to have great success with the party reporting over 400,000 hits on the website during that time. Whether or not it was genuine engagement or perhaps a political stunt of some sort we may never know. But it was getting close to the way in which social media is supposed to be used. People have expectations about social media. They expect that not only will they hear from their political masters, but also that they will have a chance to engage, they will have a chance to influence. This is the only way in which social media can be used properly in Irish politics. Traditional media and social media work at completely different speeds and this has been a challenge for traditional media. People expect social media to give them up to the minute, perhaps up to the second, news and information. We wait for traditional media. We like traditional media for the context. We like traditional media for the verification. When traditional media tries to mix with social media, you have problems. One of the best examples of this was in October 2011 in the final days of the Irish presidential election. RT's frontline programme brought together the candidates for that election and a topic of some contention arose that evening with one candidate, Sean Gallagher, accused of collecting money on behalf of Fianna Fáil. He denied it and the matter seemed to be fairly well under control for Sean Gallagher until the presenter read a tweet purporting to be from the Sinn Féin political party announcing that they would have a press conference the next day and be able to identify the donor of the money that was supposed to have been collected by Sean Gallagher. Two things happened. One, Sean Gallagher was completely wrong-footed and looked as if he was possibly implicated in this but certainly looked inept. The second issue was that because Pat Kenny, the presenter of the programme, read the tweet, it had the authority of RTE it had a presumed verification. The audience took that tweet in a much more serious way than they would have had had they seen it on their phone. Had they got it on their own device they might have said I wonder is that true? But because Pat Kenny had read the tweet it was presumed 
even subconsciously, to be true. The extent of the impact on that tweet may never be known. Was it responsible for Sean Gallagher losing that election? Perhaps, perhaps not. But there's no doubt about it. It did have a significant impact on his campaign. More importantly, for journalism and for communications, that tweet demonstrated that we have some way to go before we can balance the role of traditional media and the opportunities we have in social media. Thank you.